Good morning and how are you? Hope you're all having a splendid, wonderful day. Today we are making a wine, an experiment. I have never made this wine before, so don't trust me on the outcome. This wine is an AI wine. AI stands for Artificial Ingredients. Completely, utterly artificial wine. Fantastic. So for this recipe, we are going to be using some food colour and some red wine food cake flavouring. I woke up the other morning with an urge to make an easy wine. What's the easiest way I can make a wine without any faff? And I think these would be fantastic. So it's some red wine food flavouring and some red wine burgundy food colour. Now, I had a thought as well. If I was ever in prison and I wanted to make some decent red wine, these would be so easy to smuggle in, wouldn't they? Uh-huh. So make the normal prison hooch out of your sugar sachets from your tea, coffee, etc. A bit of bread to get the yeast going and you'll then be able to make your prison hooch and flavour it with red wine and cure it burdened. And then you'll be prisoner of the month running that prison block. Brilliant. So for this really simple recipe using our two concentrated flavours of colour and flavourings, we are going to need 1.25 kilograms of sugar. We're going to pour that straight into the demijohn. So with a funnel, pour the sugar into your demijohn and then we'll get cracking and make up that gorgeous syrup. And now we're going to pour over the two litres of near boiling water into the demijohn, make up a lovely syrup solution. Fantastic! Now we're going to give the demijohn a quick shake, get that sugar mixed in and dissolved with the liquid. They do say to add one to two grams per kilo of cake mix or icing. So I'm pouring the whole pot. With the colouring, it's full of E numbers. I love how it states as well, may cause adverse effects on the attention and behaviour of children. Fantastic. So I'll bear that in mind when I give a glass of this to my five-year-old to test. Just, if there's any adverse reaction, it's not the alcohol, it is the food colouring that's causing the issues. So what we're going to do now is simply squeeze in the food colouring and the flavour, the lovely red wine flavour. And I do wonder what the end result is going to be in three, six, nine months when we come to do a taste test. How will this be? Will it be burgundy colour? Will it taste like red wine for the sake of having two samples that you can shove up somewhere and smuggle into prison? I don't know. Let's give it a try. And now we're going to add the red wine food flavouring. Let's have a test. Oh, that is so sweet. It doesn't taste like red wine at all, if you ask me. It tastes more lemony, vanilla-ish. I can't taste any red wine coming through from this red wine flavour. So I will give it another shake now. Get the remaining bits of sugar mixed in with that lovely, I would say lovely, very intense red wine colour and that food flavouring. So give it another shake, get it all mixed in. at the state of that. <clears throat> and that's one of the beautiful things about homebrew. You know, mess around with the flavours and any ingredients you want to make wine from, make it. Don't be scared. I mean, try it. If it doesn't work, nothing lost. A kilo of sugar, 1.25 kilos of sugar. If it hasn't worked out the way you want it to be, you've learned something. If you've learned something, you have improved. So what we're going to do now with this wine is pouring another two litres of cold water to bring it down to about room temperature so it's not too hot when you come to add the yeast. And now it's time to add the yeast and the nutrient to the mix. That should be perfect, so sprinkle in your general purpose nutrients first. Empty. Then pour in, sprinkle in your wine yeast. There you are, good job. Now, what we're going to do is give this a bit of a stir, a bit of a shake, put an airlock into it and let it stand and start fermenting. 
If it is vigorous, I don't think it will be, because there isn't enough body in there for the yeast to really thrive on. But if it is fervid and a bit frothy fermentation, let it be until that has been completed, then top it up to the neckline, let it stand, let it ferment in a warm place for as long as it takes until it's dry. And I cannot wait to do a taste test of this wine and just see if this is going to be a worthy wine, if it stands up at all. Burgundy colour, red wine flavour in two, simple. Will it be fantastic? Will it be a burgundy colour? Will it maintain that colour? Will it be red wine flavoured? Just in two little pots of artificial ingredients. If so, it might be worth having a few of these in stock. Will it be too strong in the flavour? I don't know yet. Maybe half of a pot will be enough to do a gallon of artificial ingredient wine. I don't know. In the meantime, why don't you check out this video up by here for another weird and wonderful experiment. And I'll see you all really soon. You have fun now.